Foreign Minister said just then, um, since I came into this role, I've uh, paid special attention to highlighting the importance of Africa to Australian interests. And I've worked hard to uh, advance Australia-Africa relations. And, and this is because Africa is important to the world, to Australia, to our shared futures. As the Foreign Minister just mentioned, last year we welcomed the Africa Union as a member of the G20. This was a significant moment, not only in Africa's story, but in the story of our global economy. Prior to the African Union's entry, the G20 represented two-thirds of the world's population, 75% of global trade, and 85% of global, global GDP. The African Union's entry has added 1.4 billion people and almost three trillion US dollars in GDP to those figures. This reflects the fact that there is no global economy without Africa. Africa will have the world's largest potential workforce by 2030. Africa's middle class is projected to grow to over one billion people by 2060. Before the end of this century, the biggest cities in the world will be African cities. These are simply staggering projections, and they can't be ignored. The message is crystal clear. Africa is not arriving, Africa is here. Now it's true that Australia's foreign policy has an Indo-Pacific focus, given that the Indo-Pacific is our neighbourhood. But while Australia is not a global power, we do have global interests. Nowhere is that more clear than the interests that we pursue with our partners <coughs> in Africa. I'm pleased that in the broad, Australia-Africa ties are expanding to meet the future global challenges. We have long worked together in multilateral forums. And that's why Australia is committed to UN reform and to a UN that better reflects and represents the world of the 21st century. This includes greater representation for Africa on the UN Security Council. Africa's continued rise over the course of this century will have a monumental influence on the trajectory of the world as a global engine for growth, as a major partner in the global transition to net zero, and as a key partner in international peace and security. Australia can play a constructive role in Africa's rise because Australia and Africa share many commonalities. We're both blessed with natural endowments of critical minerals. Rare earth elements, lithium, cobalt, nickel, I'm sure that many of you here know the full list. The World Bank has reported that we will need to increase the extraction of these minerals by five-fold by 2050 if we are to meet the demand for clean energy technologies. So whether it's solar, wind or geothermal technology, the raw material needed to help power the future will first need to be mined out of the earth, whether that's here in Australia or across the Indian Ocean in Africa. Australian interests in Africa represent a long-term commitment to commonalities and to the prosperity of these communities. As the Foreign Minister has said, in recent years, the investment by Australian companies has risen to around $60 billion. Such investments provide jobs, training, expertise, opportunities. And they come with new infrastructure and deliver significant benefits to local communities. Australians are proud of Australian mining of Australian innovation, of Australian ingenuity. Companies are also increasingly looking to process minerals in Australia, supported by the government's future Made in Australia incentives. And I'm proud that a range of Australian companies also support value addition in Africa, whether that be the smelting of manganese alloys or the refining of heavy, heavy mineral sands, or the largest aluminium smelter in the Southern Hemisphere, located in South Africa. By adding value to raw minerals, we can create more jobs and support new market opportunities in the process. And that desire applies to all Australian companies investing in Africa, not only to the resources sector. I'm confident that Australian companies can continue to work together with their partners in Africa to deliver economic growth and prosperity in socially accountable and environmentally responsible ways. That's the only way we'll meet the scale up required to meet that net zero challenge. The Australian Government will continue to support these partnerships. In December 2023, we ran a mining governance short course for 25 African officials, which has supported African governments to develop and regulate their mining sectors. We'll run another mining governance short course in the coming year. And Australia's High Commission in Accra 
will convene the next West African Mining Security Conference in October, which brings together African and Australian experts to discuss how best to navigate regional security trends and operational challenges. As the Prime Minister said in her message, our engagements have always been adapted to the needs of the countries that we are working with, prioritising listening over lecturing. Australia's views about and affinity with Africa is defined by who we are as Australians ourselves. As Australia's population has changed, so have our views become more nuanced and our links with Africa more pronounced. Almost half a million Australians declared themselves in the last census to be of African heritage. My own electorate is one of the most multicultural, diverse electorates in Australia, around two thirds of my voters were either born overseas or have a parent born overseas. And it's home to one of the country's largest African-Australian diaspora communities and a large population of African international students. And with that come enriching cultural and family ties from Australia to all of the nations of the African continent. So Africa's future is not an abstraction for me or my local community. It's a future in which we all have a personal stake. And as their member, it's a future which I have a particular personal stake. The continent is going to be an enormous global player in our lifetimes because of its people, because of its economies, because of its role in the international system. There simply isn't a future where the countries of Africa are not important to Australia. You all know that, but I want to make it clear that the Australian government knows that too. So, a great Africa down under, make the most of it. I'm looking forward to engaging with you all. Thank you.